Confucianism and Civic Virtue, a human interpretation of Shunzi's political theory. Abstract. Is there an idea of civic virtue in the Confucian tradition? This paper offers a positive answer by reinterpreting Shunzi's political theory of virtue politics from a human perspective. It challenges the dominant interpretation of Shunzi's political theory as seamlessly grounded on his virtue ethics and illuminates its pluralistic structure, at the heart of which are implicit distinctions between moral virtue and civic virtue and between personal morals and public interest. In doing so, the paper sheds new light on the distinctive status of Shunzi in the history of Chinese political thought, especially in comparison with um, Mengzi and Han Feitze. It concludes by critically engaging with the dominant mo monistic interpretation of Shunzi's political theory advanced by contemporary Confucian virtue ethicists. Page 1. Shunzi is commonly understood as an arch-rival of Mengzi in the Confucius tradition and in the contemporary literature. The rivalry between these two giants of Confucian philosophy, comparable to that of Plato and Aristotle in the Western political tradition, is often captured in moral or moral psychological terms. The argument goes, 1. The two thinkers held opposing views of human nature. Two, accordingly, they had widely different, almost contrasting views of the way in which human, humans become virtuous. And three, despite these differences, they both understood politics primarily as a matter of morals, particularly moral self-cultivation, thus imparting to it no independent meaning of its own. That is, for both thinkers, it is claimed political philosophy, i.e. virtue politics, is founded on moral philosophy, i.e. virtue ethics. Accordingly, the rivalry between Mengzi and Shunzi is mainly about how virtues are originated and how they should be cultivated, but rarely about how distinctive their respective understanding of virtue is. Though understandable, the problem with placing the two as rivals is that Shunzi's moral and political philosophy is evaluated, even reconstructed, with reference to Mengzi's, as if Mengzi's account of moral and political philosophy is the model. For instance, students of Shunzi's moral and political philosophy have been preoccupied with whether or not Shunzi's theory of human nature is logically consistent or how moral motivation is possible given Shunzi's assumption that human nature is bad. Questions that do not arise in Mengzi's moral philosophy. However, less attention has been paid to the possibility, despite textual evidence that lends strong support to it, as will be shown, that what motivated Shunzi's moral and especially political philosophy was not so much bad human nature as such, but social chaos that morally requires a just political order. This is not to say that the problem of social chaos was never recognized in existing studies of Shunzi's moral and political philosophy, but when the problem of social chaos is noted in the literature, it is generally understood as an essential attribute or just another aspect of bad human nature. That is, the focus has always been on bad human nature, which is assumed to naturally cause social chaos and rarely, almost never, on the distinctively political problem of social chaos, necessitating its remedy, or put differently, creating, in Hume's language, the circumstance of justice. It is also not my contention that the idea of justice was Shunza's most eminent concern. Unlike their Western counterparts, none of the ancient Chinese thinkers contemplated the idea of justice, and thus they were never interested in developing a political theory of justice. Rather, what I argue is that Shunzi was primarily concerned with the construction of a civil socio-political order, predicated on rituals, li, in which the condition of justice can be created and maintained, despite the fact that he did not develop a moral language of justice as political, vir as political virtue, concerned with the sustenance of the ritual-based social-political institutions, thus distinct from personal morality, i.e. moral training and self-cultivation. 
Notwithstanding Shunza's great insight into the distinction between justice or civic virtue, to which he gave no name, and personal morals, the insight that is evidently lacking in Mengzi's monistic Confucianism, in which civic virtue is extended from personal virtues such as ren, benevolence, or human heartedness. Shunza did not attempt to develop a distinctive moral, that is, political moral, language of justice, leading many of his contemporary and later commentators to underappreciate the pluralis pluralistic structure of his moral and political philosophy. In this paper, I reinterpret Shunza's political theory with a special focus on its pluralistic structure. In making sense of the distinctive feature of Shunza's political theory, which is obscured by the monistic outlook of his philosophical system, I will enlist a help from David Hume, particularly his insightful distinction between morals, concerned with human nature, and justice as an artificial virtue. After showing Shunza's political theory as pivoted around the distinction between moral and civil virtue and between morals and public interest, I then shed new light on the unique position of Shunza in the history of Chinese political thought, especially in comparison with Mengzi and legalists such as Han Feitza, by critically engaging with the, with the dominant monistic interpretation of Shunza's political theory advanced by contemporary Confucian virtue ethicists. Shunza versus Mengzi, an overview. Many who interpret Shunza's moral philosophy in terms of virtue ethics begin their philosophical investigation of the Shunza, the text, on the assumption that when Shunza said that human nature is bad, particularly when he criticizes Mengzi's human nature is good thesis, he indeed made a philosophical claim about human nature, that humans are naturally bad, similar to Hom's gloomy account of human nature in Leviathan. Following Shunza's own explanation, these scholars, via certain philosophical reconstruction of his thought, argue that Shunza's Zing A thesis is almost diametrically contrary to Mengzi's Zing Shun thesis. Their common argument can be um, recapitulated as follows. 1. Mengzi claims that human nature is good in that humans possess natural moral inclinations or impulses such as feelings of pity and compassion, shame and aversion, modesty and compliance, and the sense of right and wrong, each representing moral virtues, of benevolence, righteousness, ritu ritual propriety, and wisdom, respectively. One star. In contrast, Shunza claims that human nature is bad, precisely in the sense that humans do not possess such innate moral inclinations or innate pro proclivity towards moral goodness. Rather, morals are artificially formed through education and ritual practices. Lacking natural faculty toward morality and possessing only natural instincts, such as feelings of hunger and thirst, and desire for profit, humans are naturally driven to conflicts and chaos. 2. Presenting such natural moral inclinations as the sprouts of moral virtue, Mengzi suggests that humans can become virtuous by nurturing, nourishing, and cultivating them. The developmental model. <coughs> Two star. In contrast, Shunza claims that humans can become virtuous only by reforming or correcting human nature by means of ritual and yi, or the teachings of the sage kings, the reformation model. Though not explicitly argued, what is derived from these claims is rather surprising. 3. Although starting with radical, radically different views of human nature, there is no qualitative difference between Shunza's ideal moral person and Mencius's or Mengzi's ideal moral person, who has putatively undergone different modes of moral self-cultivation, and their virtue ethics supports the same kind of virtue politics, which stipulates that... If there are people who do have robust character traits and are resistant to situational variation, they can design and reliably maintain the broad range of, of institutions and situations that facilitate good behavior for everyone else. 
At the heart of these interrelated claims is the argument that Shunza's contrary that Shunza, contrary to the common view of him as a proto legalist, is as an equally robust virtue ethicist as Mengza. I have no objection to this claim, although some scholars, often called Confucian role ethicists, strongly oppose this virtue ethical interpretation of Confucian ethics. What I find problematic in this thought-provoking view, even when I appreciate its rejection of the legalist interpretation of Shunza, is the strong tendency to regard Shunza and Mengza as subscribed to the same kind of virtue ethics because it keeps us from appreciating a crucial difference between the two thinkers, especially with regard to their respective political philosophies in terms of structure, pluralistic versus monistic. In what follows, I will critically re-examine each of the three claims above and illuminate the pluralistic structure of Shunza's philosophical theory. Shunza Zing A, Human Nature's Bad, Thesis, A Critical Revisit. When we read the Mengzi, it is quite obvious why Mengzi believed that human nature is originally good. <clears throat> Most famously, Mengzi said, if anyone were suddenly to see a child about to fall into a well, his mind would be filled with alarm, distress, pity, and compassion. That he would react accordingly is not because he would hope to use the opportunity to ingratiate himself with the child's parents, nor because he would seek commendation from neighbors and friends, nor because he would hate the adverse reputation that could come from not reacting accordingly. From this, it may be seen that one who lacks a mind that feels pity and compassion would not be human. One who lacks a mind that feels shame and aversion would not be human. One who lacks a mind that feels modesty and compliance would not be human. And one who lacks a mind that knows right and wrong would not be human. Clearly, Mengzi does not claim that humans are or will be perfectly good by nature. His core argument is that humans possess natural moral inclinations and adequate nurturing of them will make them virtuous. In this view, humans are good because of their possession of moral sprouts, which implies neither that humans are perfectly altruistic nor that they are completely free from antisocial passions such as <clears throat> resentment, envy, anger, or hate. Irrespective of, of the possession of self-love and antisocial passions, according to Mengzi, humans are good because of the na natural moral inclination inherent in their nature and, perhaps more importantly, because they are endowed by heaven, the ultimate source of morality. Therefore, if Shunza has any robust philosophical claim that humans are inherently bad, and thus Mengzi is wrong, as he claims, then he needs to prove either that humans have no natural moral inclination while possessing self-love or antisocial passions, or that even though humans have natural moral inclinations, self-love and antisocial passions override them. Or alternatively, since Shunza believes in human moral perfectibility and strives to transform human nature by means of ritual practice and education, he may want to argue that morals originate not from natural moral inclinations, but from self-love or self-interest. Surprisingly, Shunza makes none of these claims. Furthermore, nowhere in the Shunza does he argue that man proactively or willingly engage in evil deeds, let alone, let alone take pleasure from them. Then how does Shunza understand human nature? According to Shunza, humans are born with desires which, if not satisfied, cannot, be le cannot but lead them to seek and satisfy them. That is, the essential quality in human nature is that, when hungry, people desire something to eat. When cold, want warm clothing, and when wary, desire rest. And these, something to eat, warm clothing, rest, etc., are what people's natural dispositions are the same in desiring. For instance, there is no difference between you, the legendary sage king, and G, the notorious tyrant, in having these natural desires.